Hey everybody, Dave from Clean Pro Supply. We're gonna do a walkthrough video of the Mighty Airhog. This has two LX vacuum motors inside it. So you're gonna have about 180 inches of water lift and about 225 to 250 CFM airflow. Very powerful little unit. You can use this in conjunction with carpet cleaning or talon grout cleaning. I recommend it more for carpet cleaning because it's a little bit smaller for the amount of water you're gonna go through for talon grout. That's where I would actually recommend a bigger unit like the Flood Hog. However, for carpet cleaning, this works great as a standalone extractor, or you can also add it in line as a booster, a vacuum booster, to extend the length of your hose run if you're using a portable extractor. So I'll go through each of the features, and then if you have any questions at any time during this video, feel free to comment on the actual video itself. And I'm happy to you know, message you directly or, or answer your questions. On the back side here, we have the two power cord pigtails. Each one of these has to be on a separate circuit and it's 110, 120 volt circuit, typically 20 amps, although it will function on 15 amp circuit if you're not using the pump out. We have three switches. We have vacuum one, vacuum two, and the pump out. So on this machine, there's no water pressure coming out of the machine. It's just the vacuum suction using it as an extractor. However, this blue wastewater tank still needs to exhaust the wastewater out and that's what the pump out is for. So no water pressure, but we are gonna use the pump out to empty the machine. The pump out switch is right here and that's gonna operate the pump out pump inside the wastewater tank, which is this blue tank here. So the wastewater that fills up, we need to exhaust that out of the machine. And the best way to do that is to use the pump out, turn that switch on, and then have this valve open connected to a quick neck and a hose. And that garden hose or whatever kind of hose you're using will exhaust that wastewater into a slop sink. In addition to the switches there, we have a exhaust. This is your, your vacuum exhaust from your, your vacuums coming into the machine. This is just a vent fan for the components inside. This is where your vacuum comes into the machine. So it's a, it's a two inch vacuum inlet with a mighty cuff links. And then that will go to your vacuum hose connected to whatever tool you're using. So switching back to the backside again, you have two ports here. And this is very important to know the difference between the two. If you're using this as a standalone extractor, you're gonna keep both of these caps on. If you're gonna use this as a vacuum booster, in between a portable extractor and then maybe the vacuum and then the air hog and then your your wand for example then you need to know where do you want that wastewater to go so if that wastewater is going to go back to your other portable extractor where you have a vacuum hose coming into the front and then another vacuum hose going to your extractor but you want that water to go with that vacuum hose to your extractor and then get pumped out of your portable extractor then you're actually going to take this off and connect your portable extractor to this bottom port. What that's gonna do is it's gonna suck the water out of the waste tank and it's gonna bring it back to your portable extractor. However, on the flip side is if you want the vacuum going back to your portable extractor, but you don't want the water going back to your portable extractor, then you're actually gonna take your vacuum hose from your portable, attach it to this top port. And that way all it's doing is adding vacuum boost to your inline setup. But the wastewater is still gonna come out of your pump out right here if you're using this port for your vacuum. But again, if you're not using a portable extractor, you're using it as a standalone, keep both of those capped. Always use your pump out because this tank is not really big enough to contain itself as, you know, without using the pump out. So you will need that. On the top side here, we have the waste lid. This will come off. It's a little turn lock with a seal around the top. You have the internal components of the machine. This initial PVC stack you see is where the vacuum is getting pulled from the tank into the vacuum motors. There's a little strainer piece here. You can clean this regularly if any hair or gunk gets built up in there for maintenance. But then down inside, there are these little float sensors so that if the water does happen to fill up and it's either not getting pumped out quick enough or your pump out stops working or you just forget to turn it on, if this machine fills up too much with water, these will float and then that'll actually cut off the power to your vacuum motors so that way the uh, machine itself shuts off. If you're using this machine and it does happen to start leaking water out of this vacuum port, or I'm sorry, the exhaust port, whether it's dripping or maybe it's blowing completely out, a couple things. The reason why that's happening is because you got moisture into your vacuum inlet stack tube here. The first thing I would do is turn everything off, maybe add some defoamer into your tank or add some defoamer to the floor that you're working on or just make sure you're not actually overflowing if those switches are stuck or something going on in there. Um, but I also recommend keeping a tarp on the floor. Some contractors will also put a cuff on here with a little hose, so that way you can direct it into a drain pan or something, so if it does just blow a little bit of mist. Another thing to be aware of is the more moisture coming out of here, 
Of course, the more moisture going through your vacuum motors, that will damage your vacuum motors over time. It'll rust the internal components of those vacuum motors. So if that's happening on a regular basis, just make sure you're using enough defoamer to try to avoid that as much as possible. So the inside of the machine here, it opens up with just this one clamp. And then we'll tilt this open. Here you can see one of the vacuum motors and then they're plumbed in series. There's another vacuum motor here and then that one plumbs out the back. So in series means they're in line with each other. So this is the, uh, the, the pump out hose here and then there's a little pump in the bottom of this that actually you know, pulls on that and pumps it out. The rest of it is all just wiring. It's a very simple design. So it's very simple to uh, maintain and replace parts if needed. And then to put it back together, just like that, and you're all set. If you have any questions, uh, I've seen you reach out anytime. I'm happy to help. Take care.